This is KGW News at Sunrise. This morning on Sunrise, we have reaction to a Harney County judge's decision to block Measure 114, the Oregon gun control law that was approved by voters a year ago. The judge ruled it unconstitutional this week. We're going to hear from people both for and against that ruling coming up in one of our top stories. And negotiations between the Portland Public School District as well as the teachers union are on hold until Friday. And while some progress has been made, one major sticking point still has them at odds. We'll have the very latest on negotiations. Plus. So I used to live in Hawaii, and so I would do Thanksgiving with friends. I started making this because macadamia nuts are in Hawaii. When I moved here, it was kind of one of those traditions that I just wanted to keep. And we are extremely happy she decided to keep that tradition going. That is Tracy from Vancouver, who joined us last week here on Sunrise as part of our KGW Viewers Thanksgiving Recipe Series. You may remember she made that magnificent macadamia nut pie. <laughs> We're going to recap all five of last week's segments with a viewers recipes rewind coming up here at 515. It is, by the way, Thanksgiving morning, so I imagine a lot of people are waking up at this hour to get that feast going in the five o'clock hour. Uh, Brenda Braxton, by the way, has the morning off. In fact, she's off for the rest of her <laughs> life. If you weren't tuning in yesterday, yesterday was Brenda's last day here on Sunrise. Mm. Yes. Okay, now I'm sad all over again. Oh, <laughs> no. Hey, good reason to be happy about the forecast. It yeah, looks awesome. It is, uh, it's pretty quiet across the entire country. I do want to show you that. Some of you may be up early, and today's the day you're getting on an airplane. Um, some snow showers over Nevada, Idaho. Got some rain in South Texas, but no significant storm that would impact uh, flights anywhere weather-wise, so that's good news. We are all dry here in Oregon and Washington. The precipitation from yesterday has moved out of our area. There's Pioneer Courthouse Square. The uh, bricks are dry this morning. We're at 42. Generally, it's cloudy when you head down towards Salem and farther south, and it's partly cloudy to clear from Portland up to the north. We are watching for some fog pockets. There's been nothing widespread to date, and there are some cold spots. There's Hillsborough. Good morning to you at 32 degrees, but there are a lot of 40s, and again, it's over cast down here 42 in Salem, but sunshine is coming today. So here's our forecast kind of clouds and stars, a mixed bag, if you will, out the door. Everybody has sunshine at the noon hour 48. I have us getting up to about 52 for a high on this Thanksgiving day. Back to you. OK, looking good. Thanks, Rod. Well, this morning there is still no deal between the Portland Public School District and Teachers Union. Now the school board says negotiations will be on hold until Friday. One major sticking point is around parental involvement in decisions about class sizes. District officials said in a statement they were disappointed to receive proposals from the Portland Association of Teachers that did not address the district's proposals on class size committees. As both sides move closer to reaching a deal, teachers we spoke to say they're anxious to see a finished contract. That's been the goal all along is to get back as soon as possible. Um, I think people might be a little frustrated because we just want to get back. We miss our jobs, we miss our students, we miss our schools, right? And we just want to get back. And I think that any frustration that's coming up is just that we just want to get back. Progress has been made on other issues, including a 13.8% wage increase for teachers over three years and deals on things like planning and prep time. We're following up this morning on a major decision by a judge in Harney County who ruled Oregon Measure 114 is unconstitutional. So here's the deal. His ruling continues to block the gun control measure from taking effect, even though Oregon voters approved it now over a year ago. Right. So many gun rights advocates across the state are celebrating the decision. But as Ashley Graham's reports, some people say the legal fight is far from over. It was great news um, that we were really pulling on because it was kind of a last hope for us. That's Brian Mumford, owner of PDX Arsenal, and he's talking about a Harney County judge's decision to permanently block Measure 114. So with Measure 114, from the beginning to the end, it was misleading. It was not organized. There were not the proper communications made to have this work. The ballot initiative first passed by voters in 2022 demands stricter gun laws by requiring federal criminal background checks, gun safety training, and banning the sale of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. While a federal judge ruled the measure constitutional earlier this year, a state judge said it violates the Oregon Constitution. Here's Lewis and Clark Professor Tung Yin to explain. So basically any law, in this case a ballot measure, but still counts as a law, has to, if you want to think of it this way, 
run through both gauntlets to be valid. If you fail one or the other, then the law is no good. Circuit Judge Robert Rascio explained in his ruling, the measure violates an Oregonian's right to bear arms, particularly the section that would ban high capacity magazines. Rascio says it would effectively ban all firearm magazines. Mumford agrees, arguing most magazines can be modified, which would make them illegal under the measure. Now, for those who understand the anatomy of a, of a handgun magazine, those base plates on those are removable to service them, clean them, replace springs. That means that any magazine and all magazines that have a detachable base plate those would not be allowed, even at the 10 round limit. As for Lift Every Voice Oregon, proponents of 114, they still believe Oregon voters want to see the measure implemented. Although they weren't available to go on camera, in a statement, Reverend Mark Knutson said, voters were clear that these life-saving policies should be the law in Oregon. We know these policies have been upheld by courts in other states, and though we anticipated Judge Rascio would rule the way he did, we have been preparing for the appellate process for some time now. Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum says she plans to appeal at the appellate level, and Governor Tina Kotek voiced her support. So the fight is not over. No, and then, of course, whichever side win or loses at the appellate level can seek review from the Oregon State Supreme Court. But a case like this, um, you know, high profile, very wide reaching in terms of its impact on Oregonians, is, you know, there's a good chance the State Supreme Court would weigh in. Ashley Grams, KGW News. Here's another story we're following this morning. This one comes from the Park Rose Heights neighborhood of Northeast Portland, where one person died after a shooting late yesterday afternoon. Police say it happened right around 4 o'clock at an apartment complex near Northeast 111th and Widler. When officers arrived, they found a woman who was dead from a gunshot wound. They say the suspect or suspects got away, and so far there's no word of any arrests. <laughs> On this Thanksgiving Day, Blonzi's Guest House in Salem is offering up a free holiday feast for people in need. They're open from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. today for dine-in only as a gift to the community. In a Facebook post, they say the event is open to anyone, from people with financial need to even people who are just spending the holiday alone. Blonzi's Guest House is located at 4850 Portland Road in Northeast Salem. You can also find more details on its Facebook page. Also, a quick programming note to tell you about this morning after sunrise, you can catch the Today Show, followed by the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade at 8.30 a.m. And it would not be Turkey Day without a little football, right? Kickoff for the 49ers versus Seahawks game will be at 5 o'clock tonight. Then we'll be back with a special edition of KGW News at 8.30 and 11. Rod, do you know the full football schedule today in the NFL? Uh, I do not. you got uh, the Packers at the Lions. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the Commanders at the Cowboys. Then on NBC right here, KGW, you've got the Niners at the Seahawks. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the big game. Well, it's the one airing that's tonight a, on our station. Yep, that 5 one impacts and up for grabs uh, division still, too. Yes. Hawks. Okay. Next up on this sports cast, we're going to bring you inside <laughs> information from the locker rooms. Rod Hill reporting live. Yeah. Hello, Pete. Mr. Carroll, come on in. Just kidding. Here we go <laughs> with our uh, satellite picture. Well, we've, we've been just hammering this point home that was going to be a really problem-free, not only Thanksgiving Day, but Thanksgiving weekend across the country for the most part and certainly here at home. Um, some of these snow showers in the mountainous areas of Nevada and up into Idaho and even over into Wyoming will be heavy, but none of the major cities that you'd be flying into are going to be impacted. Salt Lake State's mostly light snow showers coming. Tomorrow into Saturday's mostly light snow showers coming into Denver. And we are all quiet uh, from San Francisco all the way up to Seattle this morning here at home. Kind of a mixed bag of some cloudy areas and stars out there twinkling. Futurecast still loves that we will be seeing some increasing fog in the coming hours, mainly on the east side of I-5. Not seeing much of this right now. There are clouds when you head out toward Pendleton. And those clouds may be stubborn today, and you can see that here at 4 o'clock. So we pretty much clear out here on the west side, but we continue to see some clouds as you head out 84 and get out over the uh, Blue Mountains today. Now tomorrow, pretty much everything just goes clear. Um, east winds will start to develop, and it looks like once we get through today, even valley fog opportunities are going to be very limited, and we are going to open up a run of days through Sunday with just beautiful blue skies out there. East winds, especially going into Saturday, have the potential to become pretty gusty out near the gorge. Here's Timberline this morning. Um, temperature is 27 degrees. Just a reminder, it's 
all dry. Cascade highways are all dry, clean pavement. It will be that way all weekend. And if you are unaware this year, sadly, not enough snow. So Ski Bowl, Timberline, Bachelor, Meadows, nobody's open for recreational skiing or boarding. And if anything, that will take the number of people traveling up over the Cascades to a lower number. And that would make travel that much easier for you, perhaps. All right, it's 32 in Astoria. Uh, it's 40, though, in Kelso and Portland and Salem, actually 42, 42. So that's not too bad. Um, it is going to be a lovely day at the coast. The coast especially is going to be clear. Today we've got 54 in Pacific City. I think once we get into the weekend, especially going into Sunday, there could be 60 degree temperatures at the coast. So that forecast is absolutely dynamite. Here's our dry run of weather through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. A shower chance shows up on uh, Wednesday. Most of us will have light winds today. Enjoy your Thanksgiving 2023. I'm really liking that nice weather. OK, thanks, Rod. So Eric Patterson live out this morning, giving us a shot of that pink martini glass. This is always a staple oh, around yeah. this time of the year, right? Holiday season's coming and that's how you know it. You look up, you see the martini glass. This morning he'll be out and about giving us looks at all the pretty lights, all the things that'll say, hey, it's the holidays. The holidays are here. <laughs> exactly.